All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS Coding Livestream, and we are continuing our work on BXJS website. Uh, in case you missed the last stream or you wasn't there or you don't remember, we finished our archive and current uh, page rendering. So if I would to start actually this stuff right now, um, npm run dev, I believe we should see our nice website that already has the BXJS weekly markdown rendered um, with pretty much everything that you expect, right? Come on. Am I? Oh, yeah, right. I forgot to disable the virus protection because BSL is not working very nicely with it. There we go. Come on. There we go. So we got our weekly here and we got our episode. We got the episode switches and everything works perfectly fine, right? So we had uh, two problems last time. Problem number one was that we query the API on every request and this querying uh, happened on the server side because it's all server rendered, right? And um, we just hit the GitHub API limit. So we have to work around that. That was the problem number one. And then problem number two was that we actually need to add the search over the episodes, which well, basically doesn't exist right now. So we are gonna address those two things today and basically finish the uh, BXJS Weekly news page, I hope. Um, I guess let's get started. So basically the idea is, uh, since we already have our custom server, right? We're just gonna add, I think I need to increase the size of the text a bit. So we're just gonna add uh, some stuff to the server. And I guess let me start my X and uh, separate terminal. <clears throat> so let me think projects, BXJS, BXJS website, uh, come on, right. So we are gonna, what we're gonna do is we're essentially gonna have a server side cache that will cache the requests to the GitHub, right? So instead of doing this on the client side, we're gonna do it on the server side. And then we're gonna add the search component and I guess server side, I mean, we're gonna think about, so I'm basically the thing is that the file with the data that we're gonna be searching over for, it's not that big. The question is, does uh, GitHub actually has zip compression or not? Because if it does, then we can just do all searching in the client side. And if it doesn't, then uh, well, that's not gonna work that well. So uh, we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, well, let's first start by caching the GitHub responses and uh, actually moving that. This is our uh, server bit, right? So I think we are gonna have um, server here and we're gonna have an uh, index.js and I think I am gonna, yeah, I think we're just gonna move all of that over here, right? And do the module, module exports. Uh, so we're just gonna have a function that starts the server, which means in server, we can just say um, start server and it's gonna be require um, server, right? And once this is all done, we just do start server and that's it. So our server JS now looks very nice and clean. And index.js is gonna be this. And in addition, we're gonna add github.js. <clears throat> and uh, I think in this case, we are gonna use github.js to be the uh, Fastify plugin, right? Uh, and uh, now I need to remember how to write them because last time I did that was quite some time ago. So we are gonna go for Fastify docs and see the documentation for plugins. I'm actually quite excited about the Fastify uh, 2 coming out. They did fix a bunch of issues I've had with it at some points. They're very rare ones, but they're like, you know, tiny logical issues rather than anything else. Okay, so we are gonna have, yes, exactly. This is what we want. Uh, we want to, 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 we want Fastify register and this is gonna be GitHub. And I think I'm gonna move that over here on GitHub routes. Let's just call it this way, All right? And we're gonna register GitHub routes. 
and we're gonna prefix it with the slash API. So basically, this is all I want, right? We're gonna register the GitHub routes under slash API. So it's gonna be slash API slash search slash API slash query or files or whatever the hell we name them in the end. And now we need to uh, actually make the plugin itself, which is this, right? So this is what we want. And uh, we don't need any decorators. So what we actually want is um, we need two methods, right? So first one is going to be this fetch thing. Uh, right, so it's going to be const fetch, I'm just going to rewrite that because I'm too lazy to set up Babel. Um, Okay, we got the fetch, we got the URI, we got the episodes URL, I can just do this. And then we're gonna get uh, episodes, right? And it's gonna be a request reply. And it's gonna be a sync. And essentially what it's gonna do is um, very simple. So we're gonna take this thing. And we are yeah, so we're gonna wait for it. And then we're gonna say reply send rest. This is literally all we want. So we just query the JSON and send it back to the client. And that means here instead of having this um, base URL, I think we also need the we also need the base URL somehow because a server side rendering won't work in this case, right? So we actually need the base URL here, which is in this case is gonna be Da, 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 localhost localhost 3000 and in this case is going to be api episodes but this one work right so this is hard coded right now which means if we're going to deploy that <clears throat> it's going to be problematic to say the least what do you not like unfetch yet yeah, start off that is correct so I think the next js had a very nice way of um, specifying the variables based on environment. Now, if only I remember how to do that, that would be nice. Okay, so we got the routing, we got customizing, we're using custom config, uh, build directory, etag, no, that's not it. Customize, exposing configuration, there we go, this is what we want. So we are, we want next.js config, cool. So we don't even need to create new files. And uh, how do I combine that with plugins actually next yes, config exports runtime? Oh, sorry, that's a different file. I'm yes. Okay. No, wait, that's the next config, right? Okay, so how do you do this with plugins? Or do, Oh, I guess you just wrap it, right? So because it takes the object as an argument, I guess this is what we want to do. And in this case, we're gonna say we don't need any secrets right now. We just uh, I'm gonna say base URL, process and base URL and or HTTP localhost localhost 3000, right? So we're gonna default to the uh, we actually need it here because we don't care about server side only, right? So this is our base URL and it's going to be available in both client and server. Which means that next we need uh, to see how to fetch it because I don't remember there we go there's a get config and so we got this import get config and then we do this. And then we do public runtime config public runtime config. And we do where's my next config we do base URL. There we go. Okay, so theoretically, that should work, I guess. And uh, I mean, we can try it out, right? So if we do npm run dev right now, we should but I screwed something up. Uh, start server is not a function. Did I module exports? Yes, server uh, require server. Oh, blah, right. Okay. This is what I'm gonna do. There we go. This should fix it. Okay, so in theory, everything should be working as before. But uh, right now the request, if we open the console, should go through our server, not through GitHub, right? Uh, but it actually happens on the back end. So if we switch to some other thing, we should see like, uh, da -da -da, da -da this weekly app. Um, where's my XHR requests? 
I guess that also happens on the back end. God damn it, how do I? I cannot really check it from here, can I? <laughs> All of that is gonna be server side rendered, so. Um, okay, so this is our, I mean, we can, we can, we can make sure in a very simple way. So, okay, you know what, we, we just need to add caching, right? So this is all we care about right now, because this was our problem, we hit the GitHub rate limits. We don't really want to do that anymore. And our BXS weekly links repository updates every week, actually, right? So I updated on Sundays. Uh, now I'm thinking, so what would be the best way to cache it? So we can do like Node.js. Um, I mean, we can do in memory caching, right? I guess that will be the in memory cache time to live. Uh, <clears throat> um, I guess you would read it ablaze. Thank you, ablaze. Welcome to the stream. I am doing those quite regularly. So um, you're more than welcome to join whenever I am doing that. It typically happens on Wednesdays. But uh, yeah, sometimes shifts around a bit. Okay, so we have some node modules for caching. And uh, let's see anything cache is promised node cache. Do we have something like super simple? Uh, t -t 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 there we go. So we got this one looks quite nice. It has time to live. Um, so we could just use this, I guess. We got simple cache, blah, blah, blah. Does it have time to live? Would Houdini disappear? Yes, it does have time to live. Uh, you know what? I really like the yarn package search um, because they provide this like sort of additional stats that you can see immediately. LRU cache, the it's last recently used, uh, least recently used items. That might be a nice one and from Mr. Isaacs. Um, here's the question. Does Mr. Sindrasaurus has anything cash related? Because that would be very nice. But I guess we could also go for LRU cash. Um, where's the GitHub? There's the GitHub. Okay, so we got you got the options. Yeah, that looks simple enough. Does it? How many dependencies does it have? It have ya list, whatever that is. How many dependencies does this cache have? This one has where's the, the this is object size of um, whatever that does. Okay, but you know what, I'm just gonna go for the module from Mr. Isaacs because you can kind of trust this guy. So we're gonna go for this one. And we are gonna have this thing over here, right? Gonna say LRO cache, and we are gonna say cache options, const cache the options. Okay, let's just save it to reformat that. Uh, basic knowledge of Node.js, so this is interesting. I mean, my knowledge of Node.js is not amazing, but I've been using it for some years, so you know. Uh, okay, so what is the max thing? Uh, why is it? Oh, because I copied too much. There we go. We don't need any of that. Um, right. So what are the option max the maximum size of cash? Uh, I mean, we 10 probably is more than enough, right? So because we only need to store actually we need one. So we don't actually need we, we don't need more, right? Uh, we want length doesn't matter dispose what is dispose? I guess you can have custom dispose functions items. Yeah, okay, so we don't care about that. It's just JSON in our case. And we want max age, which is gonna be in this case, this is uh, 60 seconds, this is hour. So in this case, we're gonna set it to 24 hours this is a day and then it's going to be five days. So we're, maybe that's too much. Let's go for one day. I mean, one day should be enough, right? One day. Okay. X uh, cash one item. And uh, we are going to initialize the cash once we construct cash other cash. Okay, so we just do this on episodes, let's call it episodes cash. And it's just gonna be new LRU options, right? I mean, I guess we can just inline that because why the hell we create a new object if we don't reuse it anywhere. So I'm just gonna go with that. Right, so we're gonna cache max one um, item, one item, and we're gonna cache it for one day. 
and um, here's what's going to happen. We're just going to say cache gets episodes, right? Const episodes, cache get episodes. If we get episodes, then we're just going to return and we're going to reply send episodes, right? So we just send them back immediately. If there's nothing, then we're going to get them. We are going to say cache sets, uh, come on, cache sets, um, episodes, res. And I think that's it, right? So it's going to be undefined, perfect. Uh, and you could also use objects to as a keys, I guess a nice addition, but we don't really need that, right? Okay, and uh, just to make sure, let me just do this just to just to make sure that I'm sane and that it works. Um, got episodes from cache. No cache querying GitHub. So theoretically, on the first request, we should see no cache query in GitHub. On the second uh, request, we should see I got cache. My lighter failed, so I used my VR lenses to light my SIG. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Why would you do that? Okay, uh, let's see. And there is inter cache is not defined. Oh, because I miss Yeah, right, of course, it should be episode cache, right? Uh, there we go. I think that is now correct. Okay, yes, I should be more careful about how I spell variable names. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. So we got yes, this is the output that I don't really want to see. I think I should just remove it from here, right? We don't care about that. Okay, let me restart that so that we have actually just meaningful logging and not the other bonkers. Okay, reload. So first request should hit the GitHub, correct. And then if we switch to something, we get the episodes from cache. Perfect. So now it's uh, basically near instantaneous, or I guess, almost instantaneous, at least within the server. So we got that working. We solved the caching issue right now, right? So we are now handling API limits correctly. And I guess this is a good spot to commit all of that. And maybe, um, clean out this console logs because you, they are not really helpful. <laughs> right, uh, git adds, git commit, um, cache GitHub responses on server to prevent hitting API limit. There you go. Um, it's got a weird taste when you light it from the solar light. That is, I never smoked, so I wouldn't know, but that is curious observation. <laughs> Do you have a software engineering job? Um, I am working as a researcher in a university as a postdoc. Uh, like, I mean, it is software engineering, but it's more of a research and development than uh, just, you know, pure development. Okay, we did that. Uh, now we can actually do the search bit, right? So for our search bit, we need two things. First of all, okay, we no longer care about that. First of all, we need the search component. And second of all, we need the search method, which would actually execute the query. Now, uh, for those of you who either did not see the previous live streams or missed them, they are uh, so the search will work in this way, we have this BXGS weekly repository where I post the podcast links in the markdown format, right? And then on every post, we have a script that automatically generates the uh, index file that is kind of like elastic search, but actually elastic lunar. Um, so yeah, we're going to use that to uh, search over and we have two choices, we can do it in the client side, or we can do it on the server. And I'm thinking since we're already caching stuff on the server, we can just do it over there. What makes you interested in GitHub? GitHub is awesome. And I am interested in everything on there because it's a source code, it's community, and there's a lot of awesome things going on there. I hope I understood your question. Correct. But if not, feel free to uh, elaborate and I will um, explain my point further. Okay. But uh, coming back to the search, I think yeah, I think we're just going to do it on the server side, um, just to be safe. Once again, we can cache the file. And um, let me think. So basically, what we want is fastify get slash, I guess, 
yeah, get. Do we want to get or do we want to post request here? Yes, we want to get. I mean, search query should not be that long. Never found interest in things like. I mean, if you are not a software developer, GitHub is not going to be particularly exciting for you. If you are a software developer, then just learn Git. And once you figure it out, then you will find GitHub to be absolutely amazing because it has so many cool things. And even if you don't read other people's code, the fact that you can have your own code in Git with the whole history and everything is, mm, it's totally worth learning. Okay, uh, <clears throat> apologies, coming to the search. So what we need to do here is, we need to load that file and throw it into our, uh, th uh, throw it into our, blah, 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 our elastic lunar thing, right? I'm starting to space out a bit. Um, been talking too much today. Uh, that is not what I wanted to do. Right, so we got the weekly thing here. I got the tooling here. <laughs> All right, so we need the elastic lunar and do, 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 let me think a bit. So basically what we want to do is want to download the index.json, right? We want to recreate the elastic lunar on download, upon downloading it or reread it, I guess. And then we want to use that index in our search method. So first of all, I guess let's install Elastic Lunar over here and uh, start writing it. So we need this Elastic Lunar package. Uh, okay, so here's the question. How do we handle, I mean, one way, so basically the question is, how does our website knows that there is a new index? Like one way is to just Requery the releases every day, for example, right? Which probably will work fine. The other way is to set up the hook on GitHub page that would trigger our download automatically, which I think would be better. So we are gonna have two methods. So we're gonna have the method, which is gonna be search, which is gonna execute the search. And we're gonna have a method that is gonna be called uh, update. Let's just call it update. And this is the web hook that is going to be called by GitHub. And now GitHub web hook, uh, is there a guide for that somewhere? Of course, there's a guide for that, right? So events, opt in, blah, blah, blah. So we need release event, right? There's a, there should be a release event. Yes, anytime release is pushed. So delivery payload. So we got the payload, we got this stuff, we got the repository. And Okay, uh, so you just basically it's a straight pretty straightforward. So in our case, we only care about the fact that webhook was triggered. And you know what I'm going to do, I am actually uh, why not use front end framework like react review, I am using a react here, we are actually using react, but uh, for now, this is just the server side, because we need to search over the data, right? So this is the back end. Exactly. Okay, um, so we got the poor, uh, blah, 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 blah. we got the webhook triggered, which means we got to look up the API, which means we need the GitHub API for releases. GitHub API rele releases. So we just essentially need to find the latest release. Repos owner repo releases. Okay, so it's just literally this and then slash releases, right? So let's check how does it look releases. Okay, uh, that looks simple enough. Does it have the link to the file in this JSON? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna copy this and uh, paste it over here. Okay, um, JSON, uh, there we go. Okay, so we got, here's our latest release. So it's the first one, right? So it's sorted by date, which is what you would exactly expect. And we got this URL, this is assets. Uh, is there a download URL? Browser download URL, this is what we want. Okay, perfect. So we actually, uh, we get everything from the releases API. Cool. So we say const, uh, let's rename this to URL just to make it a bit more consistent. Uh, rele re releases URL, right? 
Uh, it's going to be base URL, and then it's going to be releases. There we go. And uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to create another cache, which I think is, yeah, so it's going to be like episodes cache, but it's going to be called releases cache. I feel like I should split this into two different uh, packages, but maybe it's fine for now. So we're going to have max one item, but it's not going to be one day. It's going to be every three days, just, just in case. We're going to cache it for three days. And if it's already in cache, then uh, yeah. Uh, Festify. Festify is nice. It's basically Express.js, but with uh, batteries included. Okay, um, what is the end goal? The end goal is to have a nice BXGS weekly website like you see over here with episodes and everything and search. So we are now doing search. I did this rendering uh, from the repository and now we need to do the search so I can actually find things. Okay, um, coming back to this thing. So we got, we need to fetch the, right, so we first of all, we're gonna check the cache. So we got, let's call it releases fetched. It's going to be releases uh, cache yet release. And if releases are fed, uh, no releases fetched, if releases are fetched, then we're just going to send cache cab. Uh, let's just send cached, right? So basically, we just say, hey, we actually already executed that. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. Yes, we are doing the website basically full back end front end. We got GS6 over here. We just have not started touching it yet. Once I am done implementing the back end search bit, we're going to switch to the front end and we're going to start working on the search component in JS6. Okay. Um, let me think. So we got this, we want to do exactly this, right? So we just copy paste this from here and this releases uh, URL, right? So it's going to be releases JSON. Releases fetched uh, release is going to be rest. I'm just going to put in the whole data because why not? And we actually don't want the whole data, right? So releases API returns an array and we actually want the latest release from here. So it's going to destruct it. And we're just going to prop it, plop it over here. Right. So in theory, if I rest if I start the server now and PM run dev, there we go. Uh, I screwed something up because this should be a sync, right? There we go. But no, that's not what I wanted to run. There we go. Okay. So the GitHub component is the website to find its content. GitHub, I mean, this is the GitHub part of the server, right? So I already have all the data hosted on GitHub right here in the BXJS weekly repository. There's the links folder, there's our markdown. This is what we are currently working with. And I essentially just interface with the GitHub right now. Okay, uh, theoretically, we should be able to say API updates and we should see Internal error. No, that is not quite correct. Set of undefined. Did I screw up the name again? Release. Oh, uh, well, whoops. That is, yes, I did screw up again. So let's not do this. We do this and come on. Okay, so now we should see the latest release, right? And just to make sure, um, okay, format this. Okay, that looks correct, I think. Let's just double check that it is indeed the latest result and it is correctly sorted. Uh, where are my releases? Uh, my releases are over here. Hey, Bakao, welcome to the stream. Yes, the idea is that indeed we, I commit stuff to GitHub and the website automatically gets updated. Okay, so we got 1848.39 and this is exactly what we should see over here. Um, tarball. No, that's not a, a da, 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 index 18. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that looks correct. Uh, where's the name of it? Tag name. No, this is author. Where is my description? Okay. I mean, we can just check the tag name, right? So this should be the latest one. Exactly. Okay, cool. So we're, we're good. It, the releases are sorted. So we get the latest release correctly. 
which means now we get the assets. So we set the cache, get latest release from here. Uh, add to cache to make sure we do not check for um, releases more often than every uh, how many I think five days? Was it five days? Three days? Okay, three days. Okay. So next thing we want to do is we want to get um, assets, right? So it's going to be assets from our object. Is it directly assets? Yes. Okay. So we are getting assets and it's going to be a latest release. And then from assets, we are going to get the first one. Okay, const uh, asset index, this is gonna be assets, I, I don't know why I like destructing so much, I could have written it completely differently. Um, okay, now all makes sense. Well, okay, glad you glad I finally figured you finally figured it out. I mean, it is like fifth live stream in the series. So yeah, it might be a bit confusing when you start watching in the middle. <laughs> How do you fetch those markdown files? What's the URL? Um, the markdown files are fetched directly from the GitHub. Um, the URL is right here. You can actually get it from the GitHub API. Okay, so we get the assets, um, I guess, main, main, let's call it main asset, why not? So we got the main assets, this is going to be this thing, right? And from this thing, we want the download URL. And this is gonna be this and it's gonna be main assets, right? So we get the URL. I feel like this could have been simplified a lot more. <laughs> um, how do you distract an object that has a nested array? What stack are you using? I am using Fastify and Next.js, all JavaScript and Node.js. So this is purely JavaScript. But okay, that's, you know what, that's fine get download URL. Okay, so we get the download URL. And next thing we want to do is actually write that URL to um, to cache, or actually download it and write it to a file system, right? So let me think we need FS require FS. And we need here's the question, can I use isomorphic unfetch to stream data? Um, isomorphic, uh, I probably misspelled it on fetch. There we go. Okay, isomorphic on fetch. Bare minimum polyfill, uh, or JSON. And I, I mean, I could just dump it to file like this. This would just dump it to text and then write it to file. That should work as well, right? I don't know if I want to deal with like file streams and everything. It sounds too complicated for now. I seem to join people's streams when they're deep in the project and I start to feel like a bad programmer. No, I mean, that's absolutely normal, right? You join in the middle of a project and what do you expect to understand everything from the first minute? Like all, if you are interested, all the previous streams are published on my GitHub channel. Oh, sorry, GitHub channel, my YouTube channel. So you can actually just go there, check it out, watch the previous streams. And then join our Discord server and ask questions if you have any. I'll be more than happy to clarify things that you did not get. There is nothing wrong with not understanding a relatively large project uh, from you know from the beginning, from the middle of the stream. Okay, so we are gonna fetch that browser download URL. Uh, const file text. Let's just do it like this. Await fetch. Then our our text right. And I'm going to say file, write file. As, I guess we can just write it sync because why not? We will write it to, okay, we need the path package. Const path require path. So I am going to create, uh, I'm going to save this. I'm going to create a folder called indexes, I guess, and I'm going to create dot git kip file in here just to commit it to be able to commit it essentially to the repo. And uh, we are going to have const indexes path, I guess index path, right? So it's like, this is going to be better path join. So dear name, and then we're going to go up 
and then we're gonna join it with uh, index uh, indexes index i guess maybe i just rename it to search yeah how do i call it like index is terrible uh i did similar thing but through raw gits uh like i mean the raw git is really nice it's just the thing is we have a server so why not cache it ourselves that's kind of the point you could do it through raw git without any uh, github api or anything like this the problem with the github api is that they don't serve any uh, they don't serve correct headers depending on their file type right so if you depend on that the raw git essentially your own your main uh tool good luck with your project brought raspberry pi oh yeah raspberry pi is quite cool so uh, have fun with that <laughs> and thanks all right, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna go with indexes because why the hell not? Okay, so we got the path and we are gonna write it to const file name. It's gonna be path join um, index path and we're gonna have it index JSON, right? And I'm gonna say, okay, write file name, write file text, and then just send back I guess done, right? So we're just gonna do that. Okay, so theoretically, if we now execute that, so I need to restart the server. If we now execute that, we should see a file appear in indexes folder. And that file should be readable, right? There we go. We got our index JSON. And uh, yeah, so this, this looks like our index. So this actually works perfectly fine. So we got, we need to configure the web hook later on at some point, but for now, this is more than okay. Now, another thing we have to do here is we have to first create the um, elastic lunar index, if it exists. And if it doesn't exist, then recreate it over here after the file download. So I am gonna go to our BXS weekly repository. And I'm gonna have a look how we did it because I already don't remember because of course I am. Okay, so we got our index path, I guess, I guess, yeah, maybe it makes sense to just do this index JSON and just save ourselves a few, a few, a few lines of code, essentially, right? So we don't do this. And we're going to create the elastic lunar index. And this is, yeah, so this is how we do it, essentially, right? Elastic lunar index loads. Okay, and I think the load index that I used read index was uh, no, this is not what we want. Check dupes, I think it was. Uh, load in no, what load index? No. Huh? We so we got the index. How did I use that? So this is this is reconstructing the index again. index path hell if i remember how i did that so this is all still indexing okay i am slightly okay i mean I, I remember that you can just do that right so this is theoretically what we want to do json parse and i guess we actually want um, let me think so i guess i, I guess i <laughs> I guess I need the elastic lunar docs because I don't remember any of that anymore. Right, so we need what? We need index and there was the load methods that I think it returns the index, right? Yes, it returns the index. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, Madhaputra, welcome to the stream. All right, so we here, we are gonna construct um, elastic, elastic uh, lunar, I guess let's just call it search index, right? And by default, it's going to be null. So uh, load search index. And um, what we want to do is basically we want to say fs exists. How, do, how does it? Yeah, exists sync, I guess. I mean, theoretically, I have to transform all of this to a sync function, but we can also do that slightly later. So we're going we're gonna to say if exists path, um, let me think node.js uh, fs so i need the fs docs 
and we need to check I think exists is deprecated right now, right? Yes, it is deprecated and we need to use a fast stat. Okay, so we need to use a fast stat sync. Again, we're going to rewrite that to be asynchronous at some point. And uh, stats returns, what does it returns? Note, uh, fast stat file exists. There we go. This is exactly what I want. Check synchronously file exists. If FS exists, nah, or wait, is it not? Exists is deprecated, but exists. Oh, okay. So we can actually use exists sync, which is not deprecated. Okay, cool. And we are just going to do that. So if index already exists, then we're just going to say search index equals, and then we just do this, right? We're just going to read from it. Um, right, so we just read it and load it and we're ready to search essentially, right? If it doesn't exist, we just keep it at null. But this means that in search, if there is no search index, we're going to reply sends no index found return. Okay. Uh, um, I guess Let's just do it like this. We're going to say error, no index found, right? And then here, uh, this is going to be search index JSON parse. We don't need to read the file because we actually have everything in memory and it's going to be file text. This is what we want to do. Update in memory index. Okay, write index to file. And we are actually done with this, right? So um, I actually want to add that is a lot of stuff, but okay. We want to ignore downloaded index files. I want to ignore indexes slash JSON, right? Okay. So we got this, we got that, and then uh, we need the search function, which we can close all of that. We don't care about this anymore. So we need the read uh, tools, which is this stuff. And we need both enrich and we need find in titles and in URLs. So I think we would need both of those. We're going to do it here. So we got those functions. So enrich function uh, takes the documents from the index and appends them to the search results because by default, we only get the document IDs. Find in titles searches the index by titles and find in URL searches the index by URLs, right? So we want both of those actually, and then we're going to concatenate the results. Okay, const title results is going to be search by uh, no, sorry, find by find in titles. And this is going to be request. Um, okay, so how do we do this const query is going to be request. Right, um, Fastify, I need some Fastify documentation. I think it's like request query something, right? We need the request object docs requests and there should be query, there we go. Quest query, um, qu query, query, yeah, I mean search, I guess. Let's, let's call it this way. So it's gonna be query and the index is gonna be search index. Then const URL results is going to be find in URLs query um, search index, right? So we pass in the index. And then we just say reply sends for now, we're just going to say title re results, URL results, right? So in theory, right now, if I restart that and we query our search method, so first of all, if we do that, okay, it redownload the index, but if we query it again, it says cached, perfect. Now in the search, uh, we say search, I mean, okay, you know what? That That is not very nice. Let's just say Q. I think that will be a bit more convenient. So we're gonna say Q equals um, Google. And we actually get some results. Let's check them. Format this stuff. We can close the side panel for now. We get title results, which includes is Google. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that looks fine. 
and they are sorted by the score already. So we don't actually uh, need to even sort them now. Or I guess we could just merge them and sort them by, I mean, I don't know, do I? Here's the question, do I wanna run two queries or can we just say find, and uh, can I just say this? So let's just compare. So if we just give equal boost to the URL and to title, theoretically we should be able to get away with just running one query, right? So yes, and uh, we're gonna create this km json format. Okay, so the title results is is Google TypeScript at Google working on Google Chrome one year on building Google web, web that looks quite relevant. Is Google deploying a stateful Google Kubernetes Google Translate? Yeah, that looks better. Okay, I think we should be fine with just one query. So I am just gonna go with we're gonna kill this find and titles and we're just gonna say, we don't need the results here, right? So we're just gonna say results slice. Uh, let's keep it to 10 results. And we're just gonna return this. So we no longer need that. And we can kill this function. And now it's just find in index is all we actually want, right? So we are just gonna say, Where's the search method? I lost it. Find an index. There we go. Results and um, results. Okay, cool. So if we restart that, we now should get a nice array of results. And we should be able to start building the UI for that, right? Uh, just to make sure that they look nice and cozy, Jason. Okay, so we get we got the URL, we get the title, we get the category, we get the file name, which is just perfect. And we get the score. Nice. So we got the search results working. I guess it makes sense to commit that. Um, okay, let me add that and then make sure that it not add index JSON. Perfect. Commit at article search on server site, right? Find the commit. And now we can um, start building the UI for it. So we are we're gonna have this GitHub. No, this is server bit. Why am I opening server? We need weekly, right? Okay, so we got the page that looks um, where is our weekly page? Right, there's our weekly page, right? And it looks like this. We want to have I guess search above that is a search bar or something over there. Um, and uh, just to handle that, we are going to go with let me think, uh, Bulma is what I want. Because we are using Bulma uh, for everything in UI essentially, right? Do they have a search box? I'm guessing not, right? So we want a form essentially input. Let me just uh, copy your inputs and uh, maybe, okay, we got the nav bar. So we want to be below nav bar, but above this thing. I'm gonna, whoops, that is not how you spell div. This is what we want to say, okay. Search for article. And you know what I actually want to do? I actually want to take all of that and create a new search component because there's going to be a lot of logic and uh, export default. There we go. Okay, so we are going to import search from component search. And it's just going to be search over here. And this all looks nice and easy, right? So theoretically, we now should see the search bar which I am okay, UI wise, it's still wonky as hell, but at least it's looks uh, and is present where we, okay, so there's a class name here, of course, there we go, we fixed that. No more errors, that looks fine. Register element is deprecated. Uh, I wonder where is this coming from? Pop up JS, what the hell is pop up JS? It's like one of my extensions. Trans over pop up, where is this coming from? Okay, you know what, whatever, don't even care right now. Okay, so we are, um, we are going to be doing search, right? So we are, we're going to need some interactions. And uh, since we actually are using return, 
Since we're using the latest version of React, I thought that it would be fun to play around with React hooks, right? So um, from React over here, and then we're gonna import to use state. And we are gonna use state and use hooks because why not? Okay, so we're gonna say um, query set query, right? It's gonna be use state and by default it's gonna be empty. Type text placeholder search for an article and I'm gonna have value is gonna be query and then on change is gonna be handle uh, search. I mean, handle change because we are literally one component, right? Change is gonna be events and it's gonna be, and we don't even need a full function here. We're just gonna set set query and target value. So theoretically, we should be able to type and, uh, right, so we need this handle change and we need, I guess, I mean, we could add a button for starters and then add the search. Add the, um, here's the question. I'm thinking, is there a, like a good component for search? Because I don't know if I want to implement the whole like drop down and everything myself. Maybe it's the, the good way of doing it. I'm just thinking if I want to spend time on that or maybe there is some existing drop down thing. Not that it's too hard to do with the, uh, Oh, with Bulma, but we could just use a card probably, right? Like put this search on top and then the results in the card itself and then the card pops out when a user searches for something. I guess, yeah, I guess let's do it this way. So we're basically gonna have a card here. Class name card. And we're gonna have a header that is gonna contain our search bar. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of the button. We're just gonna use our events. I have card content, class name. And uh, this is gonna be results. What? Results will be here, right? Okay. So um, yeah, so we need results, set results. I absolutely love hooks. Just look how clean the code looks. <laughs> it's like it's so much easier to use them than anything else. Uh, you know, the classes or higher order components or whatever. Right, so if this is larger, then we're gonna render this thing. If it's not larger than zero, then it should be just the input. Okay, cool, I mean, there's some still, some shadows going on from the card itself, but this is perfectly fine. We are gonna change that a bit later. Handle key press, right? E, if E, um, I, okay, console log. I think it was E key, but I always forget that stuff. So on, okay, we can also close the sidebar to have a bit more space on key press, or is it on key up? I always forget that as well. Handle key press. Let's just go with that for now. So in theory, if we reload right now, there is an invalid class name. What? Did, where did I? Class name. There we go. Okay. Uh, whoops, that was the wrong button. Test. Right. So we got. Yeah. Okay. So if key equals enter is what we want to say. Enter. And we're gonna trigger submit. Uh, and to trigger submit, we're gonna fetch results, right? Is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna pass set results to it as a setter. And we're gonna return. So um, const fetch results. It's our new function that has set results as a parameter. Oh, we need actually two parameters, right? We need the query and we need set results because we also need to search for something. <laughs> That would be a nice idea. So import fetch from isomorphic unfetch. Right, and it's gotta be asynchronous. 
First of all, we are going to say results are going to be await fetch. Uh, and we also need that bit from uh, here, right? So we need this base URL stuff uh, for server side rendering. Uh, API search, uh, and this is going to be search URL. Right, so we're going to say fetch search URL and we actually need to say search URL question mark Q and then um, on uh, query, let's okay, yes, Q, let's just call it Q, why not? And then encode URI component query, right? So we need to escape it ourselves. Then our transform it to JSON. And then we just basically do set results results. That's actually all we have to do. That's our search functionality. So straightforward. It's kind of amazing. Okay, and for now, we're just going to say JSON stringify. Um, and I'm going to do this in a pre tag so that we actually can see it nicely formatted. Results now two spaces. Uh, I th think that's actually it can close this. And we can uh, try Okay, there is some error going on. Get config is not defined. I guess you use it differently in the client side next JS. Um, let's see. Get config pages index. No, that should be working. Oh, right. I <laughs> right, I forgot to copy the import. Of course. Yes. This is what I get for copying things not completely. Okay, cool. So again, search for Google. And uh, that was really fast. Okay, this is quite awesome. I like it. So now we just need to render those things nicely. And we're basically done with search. That that actually worked out way better than I expected it to be. Okay, cool. So we just need to um, what we need to map over our results, right? I'm gonna say results map item into I guess divs that are gonna have what we have category title URLs file name uh, episode Yeah, I guess this is this is what we want. So what can we use to render those nicely? Are there any components that would work for us? Let me think. Panels, tabs, elements, box, maybe. Yeah, we can render them. We can render them as boxes. Why not? So diff class name box, right? Um, I'm gonna have h3 that is gonna be item title. Uh, maybe not h3. Maybe let's let's just do it this way, right? So maybe this is gonna be more useful. Item URLs. Um. All right, the URLs could be more than one uh, is something I keep forgetting. But okay, for now, we'll just do it this way. Uh, we can handle that later on category is going to be item category. And then episode is going to be um, a H or I guess this should actually be a link, which we should take from here. No, not here. Uh, from episode, I think, right? Yeah, there we go. So this should be a link that leads to an episode that looks like this. So episode is going to be a link to weekly item file name exactly. And then it's going to be item. Uh, what was the episode name in here? Blah, 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 episode name. This is what we want. Okay, so we can kill that. Save this think um, maybe use some divs to make it slightly more formatted slash diff right and uh, Google and uh, yeah, that looks okay ish. I mean, once again, you know, maybe okay, maybe we can get kill that part. That should look better. So Google once again. Yeah, okay, getting there. Um, thinking boxes might be overkill. So we can actually make it simpler. We can just have this title. 
there was this thing that is called tag, I think, right? There we go. There's a tag thing. So we can use that for the category, right? It can be like, hey, this is actually a title. And then we got item category as a tag. Uh, so this should look even better, Google. Um, kind, I mean, okay, uh, I think if we do this, would look even better. Okay, getting there. And then we should have the episode link, which should be uh, something different. So what is the title are? Yeah, okay, this is title, notification image icon, contents, uh, box button form layouts. No, we don't need any of those things. Uh, let me think maybe as a different tag so like different colored uh, white tag yeah why not let's try that is light um yeah is white so let's try this yeah i mean i'm not the best designer like i'm i'm not a designer at all let's just put it this way but uh, if you spend enough time tweaking things around it's going to be at some point it's going to look fine <laughs> let's just put it this way okay google there we go. So we got the episodes over here. That does not look very readable, but let me think, what can we do here? Uh, so we can, we can actually make it into a flex box, right? So I think that should make it way nicer. It is a flex box already, it seems. So what we can do is we can say this flex one and that doesn't actually do anything because I think this is not display flex. Uh, and I think yeah, and then we say flex, uh, what was it Co align content, align content center? No. Align items, align self. Um, Okay, I'm always confused about flexbox center horizontally. Uh, yes, this is an open source project. The links are in the channel descriptions. Uh, the previous videos are on YouTube and the whole source is on GitHub. So you can just have a look if you want to find out what's, what is this all about. Is it justify content? Justify content center. No, yeah, still not. Is it just like text align? Oh, okay, so it was this easy. Okay, so we just uh, we killed that part. Okay, so we have to say that this div is I believe there is is flex thing. And then we can just say that style here is flex one and then text align center, I think that should make it slightly better. There we go. That is almost readable. <laughs> Like at least it's, you know, it's better than it was before. And we actually got work in search, which is kind of great. Um, so, okay, so we need two more convenience things. First of all, set query. So I want to tweak some things over here on new query. Uh, new query is e target value. It's gonna new query. And we're going to say if new query length is zero, then we're going to say set results to nothing, right? So basically reset the search. Uh, and then we're going to handle if e key, is it ask? I think it is ask, right? Set results to empty. So we're going to reset this as well. Okay, so Google. Yes, that works. Google escape. No, that doesn't work. Is it just escape? And we also need to set query actually to empty, right? Query to empty one. Okay, uh, Google escape. No, well, how is the <laughs> God damn it. How is the escape key? Or is it does it press key doesn't catch escape? Was that the problem? I remember that I used the different one because yeah, okay. Uh, on key up, I think it was on key up, right? There we go. So I think this should now there we go. Google escape. Cool. This now actually works. 
Okay, uh, we kill that. So we got the search working. Yep, um, I don't know, uh, RxJS. Perfect, that's just perfect. And uh, you can click on episodes, right? This should take you to the episode itself. You can search for article and this will actually take you to the article. Okay, so you know what I wanna do is, I don't really wanna press enter all the time. So I actually want to, actually wants to trigger the results live as in when you type you know when you stop typing for a few seconds it should actually trigger them so we want to do what we want to mm, da, 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 let me think i mean obvious solution is to throw in the rxjs in here but i don't know uh okay we can do that in the next stream so basically the idea would be to add rxjs and then to because they will make the search component quite heavy, we're gonna load the search component dynamically. As in, you know, we're gonna have a search button and once the user click it, the search bar will load and then by default, it's not gonna load the whole RxJS and everything, right? So this is uh, pretty cool. If you were to use this on a Mac, where the enter key is named return, would this work? Yes, because those are, uh, so this, uh, the events we're handling here, those are not the browser events. This is synth uh, synthetic uh, React events, and they have those specific abstractions that simplify this across the platforms and everything essentially. So this would work. <coughs> Apologies. Okay, but uh, yeah, I think, we are basically done for today. Um, implement basic UI search components. So we can, uh, I can just push that. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And unless you guys have any questions or suggestions or things you wanna discuss, we can very much wrap the stream up here for today and continue, uh, so we're gonna search, ba uh, let's call it basic search, right? Um, and then uh, use type ahead for type ahead for search. And then we're gonna also dynamically load, ser uh, load search bar. This is what we're gonna do next time, along with maybe starting to work on the info page, which is super trivial, and then videos collection from uh, GitHub, YouTube, t t t uh, Twitch, whatever. All right, but I think we are... Oh yeah, we also need to set up the... Set up um, GitHub webhook is what I need not to forget because we talked about that, but I totally forgot about this already. All right, yeah. Uh, cool, I guess no more questions, no more suggestions. So I'm, you know what I'm gonna, just gonna, where's my Terminator? I closed it accidentally. Uh, we're gonna go to projects, bxjs, bxjs, uh, website, get, what? I cannot type apparently. Git status, git, git commit, um, add to do's for next stream. Yep, yeah, stream. Git push. But cut down. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that's basically it for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to see more, do make sure to subscribe to Twitch channel. I do those streams pretty much every week. Um, if you missed anything, you can always watch the VODs on YouTube. If you have any questions or you did not understand something, just join our Discord server. The link is in the description and uh, ask questions there. Either I or the other guys will be more than happy to help you over there. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So thank you guys for watching and I see you next time. Bye.